Hello there, welcome to Sudhakar Art and Photography. Today I want to take you through a virtual tour of all my landscapes. This is a journey starting from 1983 when I did my first oil painting up until today in 2021. So this is my first painting. This was painted in 1983 when I, uh, up until that time I was painting using watercolor. But this was my first effort on oil and I decided to copy the works of the great Russian artist Ivan Shishkin. Uh, Ivan was one of the, the prolific painters of his time. He was a master of uh, uh, landscape painting and the manner in which he depicted trees uh, and the effect of uh, flow of light through those trees was simply astounding. I was blown over by the talent of this great master that I decided to copy his paintings to learn that technique and to try to reproduce uh, some of his works. And during that time when I was just 23, I thought if ever I become an artist, I should be able to paint like Ivan Shishkin. So let me show you his original painting. This is rain in an oak forest and you can see what I mean uh, in the manner in which he has created this, the effect of, um, of a something that looks like a mid-morning sunshine, the mist, uh, the drizzle, uh, you can almost uh, see it, you can almost feel it, it's almost like being there. That's the effect that Ivan Shishkin creates in his landscapes. My next painting is also a copy from a great Russian artist, Ivan Azovsky. Ivan Azovsky was considered to be the master of the seas. The way in which he depicted seas, the ocean, the waves is uh, amazing. Uh, and you can see that here. This is uh, my uh, version of one of his uh, uh, timeless masterpieces called Battle of uh, Sesame, where Russian soldiers fought off their enemies. This entire painting is illuminated by this single blast here. And, and you can see a shipwreck, some sailors trying to reach out for help. There's a little rescue boat here. There's some massive ships here. It's the dead of night. You can see the full moon uh, and this entire painting is, is is a kind of event that's frozen in time maybe for a few seconds but that's how he, he managed to create that effect. Let me show you the original and you'll see what I mean uh, when I said Ivan Azovsky is the master of the seas. These are paintings that are still uh, available in the Russian Museum and you can actually see the originals. It's uh, simply breathtaking. Here's the next painting I did as a copy, again from Ivan Shishkin. The original is titled Mast Tree Groove. Uh, it is uh, the forest where Ivan lived very close by. He used to go for walks and he used to copy these uh, stunning forest landscapes that he used to see. This is a, a summer time in the Russian forest where this, the creek has almost dried up. You can see the fence passing through this creek. You can see the sunlight actually flowing in through these oak trees. The effect it creates on the floor as well as on the trunks. You can actually see every leaf, every blade of grass uh, in his original. Well, let me show you what I mean. So you can see how amazing this original is. Uh, here's, here's one artist who probably is uh, less known in the West but uh, I personally think he's one of the greatest landscape artists ever to walk this earth. So you can see all the finer details on this painting. Uh, it's, it's, it's sharper and more detailed than any photograph can take. And that's the effect that uh, Ivan Shishkin managed to create in his paintings. A couple of decades after I did those uh, few oil paintings where I copied the great masters, I decided to switch to my own themes. And this one was did uh, was done uh, from a photograph that I took in the village of Tintern in uh, the southwest of the uh, United Kingdom. This village is famous for its. Uh, old abbey that lived that stood during the 16th century and I was walking around this village I found this little cottage and the pathway I took a photograph and I decided to paint this place so 
what's standing out in this painting is the effect of the grass that you see in the foreground uh, the bushes as well as the little hillock in the background uh, the cottage and the stone walled cottage it's um, a little overgrown with weeds little daffodils on the sides of the stone wall very quintessentially English very very British uh, landscape um, but I was overall quite satisfied with the effect I managed to create this is my first cityscape in Bristol the city of Bristol where um, I took a photograph standing just outside this arch uh, and the elements I've tried to capture here is the, are the church tower the, the road that leads to the church the the cars parked on the side of the road there's an old gentleman here enjoying the sunshine reading a book with a couple of uh, youngsters taking their dog out for a walk there's a lady here, here who's pushing her pram and there's a jogger here trying to get the best out of the, the the good days that we get here in Bristol the light is flowing in from the background into the foreground and you can see the reflection of the sunlight on the cobblestone street here you can f actually feel the texture of the of the rocks and uh, the stones on this little pathway this is a, a location i just created from my imagination this is sunrise the sun is rising against uh, pushing against the the rain clouds the gray rain clouds so there's a mix of orange and yellow uh, the sunlight is actually pushing the fog back so what you see in the foreground is the fog this little abandoned boat and uh, the effect of that rising sun on the leaves so you can see those reflections here the obviously it, it has rained uh, and therefore you can see the sunlight reflecting on the, on the leaves here that's the effect you see here it's a it's a very mystic but yet realistic kind of landscape Forest Creek is about three feet uh, in width to about two feet in height. Uh, this is also an, a location from my imagination. You can see in your your gaze flows through from the foreground through the creek. It flows into the ocean. You can also feel the sunshine, mid-morning sunshine flowing in, in this direction. It's illuminating the leaves uh, on this side and obviously there are dark, dark patches on the forest where the sunlight cannot reach uh, but basically it's the flow of light that brings this painting into life it's titled the forest creek one thing that constantly disturbs me is the constant deforestation of our lovely landscapes a beautiful forest and that's what I've tried to show in this painting this was originally a photograph taken by a friend of mine in Scotland but I modified the painting a bit I added a, a snow-capped mountain in the background I've added a fallen tree and the path here that you see is uh, typical of uh, mud tracks that's caused by trucks going up and down uh, transporting timber so uh, it's it's the anguish of deforestation that helped me create this painting from brightly lit landscapes I wanted to move on to something a little different here the location is Western Supermare which is again on the southwest coast of uh, England and as, as the Sun was setting it created a magical effect for a few seconds uh, when I was there on a summer day you can see the effect of the setting sun on the clouds the reflection of the pier on the beach and the waves uh, i wasn't really satisfied with the way i've done the waves here but um, putting everything into place into perspective i think i managed to create the effect of dusk this one is titled english summer english summer is so precious here in england because these are the few days when we tend to enjoy some bright sunshine it's very quintessentially British. You have this uh, stone walled bridge, the, the little canals where people like to take their rides. 
tourists love to travel in these uh, little boats. Uh, there's a lot of foliage around here, but the effect of sunshine is visible on the bridge here that you see, and also on the trees. Uh, and uh, basically, it's sunshine that's trying to pierce its way through the bushes, and that's the effect that you see here. This is another cityscape. Um, again, one with a different flavor. This is uh, New York. This location is called Battery Park. Uh, it is basically showing a lady who's just finished her shopping in Macy's. She's carrying this Macy's bag here. It uh, tries to tell us that bad weather cannot stop a lady from doing her shopping. A lot of little details added into this painting. You can see this uh, splash of water as she's walking. You can see the complex uh, shadows created by these lights because there are multiple lights here. So this light is creating a rather strong shadow here and this light is creating a, a rather weak shadow here because it's further away from her. You can see the reflection of the benches and the actual reflection of the light itself on the wet floor. More details about the railings of these uh, in this area and its reflection that you see here. Uh, the of course the the river and those uh, tall buildings the the lights uh, the sunshine is off so the lights are on and you can see those reflections back in 2017 i took part in the sky artist of the year competition and we were asked to do an actual painting plain air uh, at the location and this location is rosalie bay in wales uh, while other artists were focusing on the ocean, I decided to take this spot here where I found this cottage, uh, a little rock here. Uh, and so I thought this was an ideal uh, location to do my painting. Although it was very cloudy, I tried to create the effect of sunshine by illuminating the clouds here and creating some shadows of the cottage itself. You can see a lady walking with her little dog. You can also see a gentleman next to the cottage. It took about three hours to complete this painting. Yet another location from my imagination. This is a hill station uh, in India where you can see this uh, mud path, tall trees that look like pine trees. Uh, as the sun is rising it creates long shadows of these trees. You can almost feel the effect of dawn. Uh, here I've used acrylic and not oil. And what I've sneakily added to this painting is a little exotic bird here. Santorini is one of my favorite works. This is uh, from a postcard that I managed to pick up while I was there on a vacation. Uh, you can see a lot of details in this painting which is about three feet in height and about uh, about 18 inches in width. Uh, you see the old lady in the foreground, her dress, the wristwatch she's wearing, her apron, uh, the balance she's carrying, the polythene bag and some leaves here and the fruits and vegetables that she's trying to sell. There's a local here who's busy doing his, um, his, his um, errands and then you have tourists walking around here. There's a dispensary here, a lot of bougainvillea flowers, railings, steps, and you have all the elements uh, that make it look like a Greek island. This is a painting I did during one of my workshops in Bangalore. It took about 30 minutes to create this painting on acrylic, entirely from my imagination again, but the purpose of this painting was to show my students the flow of light uh, and the effect it creates on the landscape. So you can see this puddle of water here reflecting the sky and all the little other elements that went into it. So this was pretty much done in a hurry. Uh, it didn't take more than 25 minutes to complete it. Uh, and I was talking through the painting to explain how everything is done. I've used a um, two inch brush here and using bold strokes, I've created the effects of trees and bush that you see here. Lastly, you can see me actually doing a, a painting during one of my workshops. The, this painting was again a demonstration of how you can create some effects using brush strokes. 
and as you can see there's a strong wind and the tree is blowing in that direction but this is a, a kind of a barren landscape with uh, grass and rocks and a little puddle of water that's reflecting the tree here uh, it's again the setting sun against the blue sky so this is basically summarizing my journey up until now and i hope you enjoyed watching my landscape paintings thank you for watching